Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So NASA recently released this trailer showcasing their new lunar terrain vehicle. You know those little moon buggies that they used to have during the Apollo missions? Well, they're back, baby. NASA is bringing them back for the Artemis missions and they look as fun as ever. But it did make me curious about the OG moon buggies. What happened to them? And why did we even have them? And how are these ones going to be different? So strap in, get ready to do a bit of time travel to see the original moon buggies, and also see what these new ones may look like. So this whole moon buggy thing got started in the mid-1960s. During 1965 and 1967, the Summer Conference on Lunar Exploration and Science brought together leading scientists to assess NASA's planning for exploring the moon and to make recommendations. And one of these recommendations was the need for an LRV, which stands for Lunar Roving Vehicle, which is the actual name for the moon buggy. And one of the reasons for this recommendation was due to the spacesuits. Those Apollo spacesuits were big and bulky and you could only go so far in them. And it seemed like a bit of a missed opportunity to travel hundreds of thousands of miles on this death-defying quest to get man to the moon. And when you get there, you can only walk around like 30 or 40 feet. Unless you had a moon buggy a.k.a. LRV. And part of me just imagines the eyes of a whole lot of dudes in that room when that first person suggests putting a dune buggy on the moon. They're like, oh my God, we should totally do that. It's gonna be awesome. I mean, to be honest, that'd be my reaction too. And so the LRV was built for NASA in Boeing's Environmental Test Laboratories in Kent, Washington in 1969. So four lunar rovers were built one each for Apollo 15, 16, and 17, and one was used for spare parts after the cancellation of further Apollo missions. And there's this great archival film that shows some of the early models of what the LRV could look like, and some of them are pretty amazing. Again, this is in the late 1960s when all of these tests are going on. And look at this little guy's rock climbing skills, like what? And this like lost in space looking thing, amazing. But ultimately, this is what they came up with. The LRV would be a two man, four wheeled vehicle, 10 feet, two inches long, 44 inches high, with a seven and a half foot wheelbase, weighing 460 pounds earth weight, and capable of carrying a total payload of 1,080 pounds. Thanks, newsreel guy. And also the LRVs were to be powered by batteries because that was pretty much their only option. Now, obviously the main problem with designing these things is the moon's reduced gravity. The rover had to be designed to operate in gravity one sixth the strength of Earth's. So the final design was actually unable to carry the astronauts weight on Earth. So NASA and Boeing had to test the LRV and train the astronauts using it not in the environment in which it would operate. The engineers on the job solved the problem by creating another lunar rover, exactly like the ones that would be traveling to the moon, except that it was six times stronger to make up for Earth's gravity. Astronauts practiced testing the model buggy on a model lunar surface called the Rock Pile at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. They also tested it while it was suspended from cables in in the manned spacecraft center in Houston to remove five-sixths of the weight and simulate the actual rover. Now, obviously this testing process was far from ideal, but it worked. The rovers ended up working the way they were intended and they got so excited, they even made these honorary driver's licenses for driving lunar vehicles. I super want one. Now, the other complicated part of this was the storage of the thing. How exactly were they going to get it to the moon? Well, the plan was that it was gonna all kind of be folded up and then like attached to the side of the lunar module. So it was this whole other engineering challenge to not only make the thing, but then figure out how to compact it into this tight little travel size container that could then be opened up and deployed on the moon with minimal assistance from the astronauts. But finally, in 1971, they figured 
they were ready to try the thing. The first LRV was launched on July 26, 1971, with the crew of Apollo 15, and was folded neatly into this small storage space attached to the side of the lunar module. And there's actually this amazing footage of astronaut James Irwin, while talking with ground control, actually slowly unpacking the LRV. And it worked. The LRV was equipped with all the technology necessary for the Apollo missions. A color television camera mounted on the rover transmitted images to NASA via satellite, so the astronauts would not have to carry cameras with them on the moon's surface. The rover was sturdy too. It could operate in temperatures ranging from minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The moon's lack of atmosphere makes it very hot in the morning and very cold at night. So the ability to withstand major temperature changes was necessary in order for the LRV to complete all of its missions. David Scott and James Irwin were the lucky astronauts who first used the LRV. It allowed them to do three times as much work as astronauts had on the previous missions, as it could go farther and carry much more than any astronaut could without assistance. The Apollo 6 16 and 17 missions also took LRVs with them, securing them to the outside of the lunar module. The astronauts put the vehicles to good use as they could explore much more of the moon's surface than they ever could on foot, especially as the vehicles could travel as fast as 10 miles per hour on the lunar surface. Which I'm sort of making a joke about, but I take those electric scooters around quite a bit, and they go like 10 to 15 miles per hour, they're pretty zippy. Though it was reported that astronaut Eugene Cerna drove the LRV the fastest at a whopping 11.2 miles per hour, which actually gives him the unofficial lunar land speed record. Now, for these LRVs, it was a one-way journey. They built four because the idea was once it got there, it wasn't coming back. So all three LRVs for Apollos 15, 16, and 17 are still on the moon. And NASA has these various LRO images taken over the years where you can still see them. Here's one that was taken in 2012 of the Apollo 15 LRV. And you can even still see the tracks of the joyride this little guy took. But another bonus from all the engineering work to create the LRV is that apparently the LRVs became the framework for the motorized wheelchairs used today by millions of people, which happens a lot more than I think people realize. We built something for space, and then we realize that part of the technology we can use right here on Earth to make our lives better. So what is gonna be different with the new LRV for the Artemis missions? Well, first off, the name is different. It is now an LTV, Lunar Terrain Vehicle. Three different private companies are being tasked with building the LTVs, and I gotta say, their concept pictures are pretty fancy. And the other big difference is that these LTVs will have the ability to self-drive. NASA said in a statement, between Artemis missions, when crews are not on the moon, the LTV will operate remotely to support NASA's scientific objectives as needed. Outside those times, the provider will have the ability to use their LTV for commercial lunar surface activities, unrelated to NASA missions. And the plan is for the LTV to go to areas of the moon, like the South Pole, that have been previously unexplored. NASA's chief exploration scientist in the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, Jacob Bleacher, that's a mouthful for your business card, Jacob, said, We will use the LTV to travel to locations we might not otherwise be able to reach on foot, increasing our ability to explore and make new scientific discoveries. With the Artemis crewed missions and during remote operations when there is not a crew on the surface, we are enabling science and discovery on the moon year round. And to be honest, we've had a lot more experience moving vehicles around on other planets since the the LRVs in the original Apollo missions. And these vehicles had no driver and were much 
much further away. So I'm actually kind of buying into these upgraded moon buggies. Of course, it all depends on the engineering firm who is designing them, but I choose to remain optimistic with this one. Of course, all this is a few years away. 2030 seems to be the goalpost for the new LTV. But since time moves crazy fast in the 2020s, I'm sure it'll be here before we know it. So that is the history and the future of the moon buggy. I'll post the full trailer for the LTV over on my Patreon page if you want to see that. NASA's getting very copyright strikey with their trailers these days. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. These things seem like such a throwback, but now I kind of understand that they're pretty practical. And in my mind, they definitely represent the part of space travel that looks fun. So if they work, it's gonna be a crowd pleaser. I say go for it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.